Well, hello there, and welcome to my den for the Vital 5 review of the movie Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. A little background on these movies for me, I am a big fan of the series, and ever since Tom Cruise took basically full control of the series, I feel they've only escalated in quality, with the last three being damn near flawless in my opinion. However, this movie lands pretty low on the list of my Mission Impossible movie favorites, being right above number two, and number two is my least favorite, being all style and no substance. This one's got most style, a little bit of substance. So these are my vital five points for my review of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. The first very positive point for me from this movie is that it has some of the best action sequences to date. Very exciting chase scenes, and it's just really well done in that sense. Tom Cruise is once again very impressive. The, the dedication he has to his craft is second to none, and it just shines in all of his movies. They don't have to use stunt doubles or... You know, they don't got to CGI him into anything. Like, he's there doing it, and you feel it and notice it in the movie, and it just makes for a huge, huge positive impact. The second point that is also very positive for me is that this movie, it knows what it is. You know, it's an action spy thriller, and it keeps that same action formula going for the whole movie and makes for an overall enjoyable ride. And it makes me look forward to number two. The third point that is also very positive for me is the CGI and special effects blend damn near seamlessly into the sequences and it makes for an incredible looking film. That always impresses me in these movies how much work and time and money they put into the scenes that need special effects and how real they make it look, you know? There's not cheesiness to it, there's not, you know, faked or weird looking stuff. It looks really damn good and I always appreciate that with these movies. They put all so much work and dedication into it, and it really comes through in the final product. Now, negative point for me. The new character, Grace. Look, I liked her, okay? I did like her. She's interesting. She's got some cool stuff in the backstory. Way, way too much time was spent on her overall. It was just forced. So forced. And it became almost like a 007 kind of thing at some points. Like, Tom Cruise immediately was like, oh, she's amazing. I'm involved. I'm interested. Need her, need her, need her, need her. And it's like, is this a love story? Or no, he's taking her under his wing? And you know, oh, you're part of this. And it's like, she's in the franchise. And they just hammer it into you. And it's like, oh, she's here, she's here. And it's just so overbearing and forced. And it's, man, it's like way too much. Way too much. Especially when there's another character, Paris, who is this badass chick. You know, she's angry. She's aggressive. She is, you know... Just wild cool. It's like, I want to know more about her backstory. Oh, we get none of it? Oh, it's just base, you know, outer level. Like, just move some scenes along. And you get just a little glimpse. And they kind of talk about it just here and there. Little mentions of what she's come through. And but you never learn anything more. It's like, I want to know more about that. Or more about other aspects of the movie. Like, a lot of stuff gets kind of glanced over. And, you know, just kind of touched on. And it's all just grace, 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 grace. There's a, there's a part of the movie that was like, just fucking let her go and die. Just, who cares? Just get this stuff and let her go do her thing. Like, god damn, this is forced. Like, what the hell? There's <laughs> so much time. And Ilsa's kind of like a thing of the past. And they're like bringing in this new character. And like, I get it. You want to introduce her. She's part of the franchise. But holy shit. Do not spend so much time on her. Maybe part two will be a little different. You know, but part one was just way forced, way too much. Holy shit, it was the gray show, and the show kind of sucked in that sense because of that. And my fifth and final point that was also very negative is, look, these movies have great spy action, you know, thrillers. They're quick. They're witty. You know, there's a lot of finesse to them. They're subtle. This movie, holy crap, was not that. There were four scenes that were specifically so over-dramatized that it pulled me out of the movie. And I was like, this scene sucks. This stoic, you know, stance, characters talking, dramatic music. It's slow. It's, holy Jesus. Those four scenes were terrible. And there was a lot of intentional and obvious scenes. There was no nuance. There was no, like, the choreography. Do you guys remember... Anybody remember Henry Cavill's scene? Like, when they're fighting in that bathroom, like, it's quick, it's back and forth, bam, things are happening. They adjust, you know, because they're trained, they're professionals, this is their job. And they're, they're fighting, going back and forth, and the choreography was awesome, just quick, 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 bam, 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 things are happening, they adjust, you know, they reposition themselves, things just go, 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 go until the fight's over. 
There is one scene in particular in this movie that's a knife versus a sword, and it's so intentional and overdramatic, and then like, oh, pauses, like, oh, you blocked that, oh, you can see things come, wow, what is this, like, oh, no, like, oh, it's so serious, it's like, oh, no, it's so stupid, like, what, they're, what are they doing, what? be quick, just, like, what, all these movies, you guys have been so quick and awesome and quick choreography, your trained professionals, like, your assassins, your killers, your, all this stuff, and what is this, like, pausing and, oh, do a move and, oh, step back and, oh, no, like, oh, my, whoa, whoa, wacky, how do you do that, like, it's just, there was more scenes in that, too, that were just so stupid and just intentional with their movements, and it was just, like, what, what, what is this, what, why, why are you doing it this way, you're making it too cheesy, these aren't what these movies, this is what I love from these movies, like, you're getting way too goofy with it, you know, and over dramatic. Oh, the drama. Over-dramatization is a killer for me personally. Not for everyone, that's fine, I understand that. But it is for me, so it's a huge down point for me. And the spy thriller finesse, that was some of my favorite stuff throughout all this series. You know, little subtle things happen. And like, we the viewers see it, obviously, because of the camera angles and how things are going. And the characters might communicate with each other through some eye contact, perhaps. And they might, you know, but it's all just, you know, they're aware of the situation. They're aware of the surroundings, what's happening. And it's all quick, really subtle, really finessed. You know, it's all just little, little movements and little things, pickpocketing, moving stuff around. Oh, this, this, this. In this movie... What the hell? There's parts of people like, oh, I planted this here. They'll look at each other and like, yeah, you know this? Uh, you, just, you know, well, did you see what I did? Oh, don't, don't let them know. And they're like around all these people and around all these enemies. It's like no one's seeing this stupid eye contact. No one's seeing like their head gestures. Like no one, where's the, you know, there's no nuance. Most of the movie was that way. You know, it's like, oh, this is happening. This is happening. This is happening. And there's one scene I just have to talk about this. So someone, you know, changes their face, Mission Impossible style. But the one person has bright blue eyes, like amazing blue eyes. And the person that changes in the mask has brown eyes. And nobody notices. Nobody. The whole time I was waiting for anybody to notice something, say something. You know, the people who are really close to her. Like, anybody mention anything. Nobody. Ever. Like, it was so obvious and apparent. I was like, it has to be part of the scene. It has to come up. I mean, it's so obvious. It has to. Never did. Stupid. <laughs> so stupid. So those those couple points, like the forced grace thing, over-dramatization, you know, intentional obvious, and just no, no spy thriller nuances. It was just too much for me. Maybe part two will bring it all together, and it'll be kind of back to the old formula. But for right now, this one has me a little worried. I'm still looking forward to part two, but this one was one of my least favorite Mission Impossible movies, honestly. So that gives it a 6 out of 10 for me. Thanks for watching.